Hey there, people out on YouTube. This is Jared the Hedgehog talking about Persona 3 FES for the PlayStation 2. Now, the Persona series to me, I recently got hooked. I was playing over at Mindless Invalid's house for a long time on Persona 4. But once I got my own PlayStation 2, he allowed me to borrow his Persona 3 and to be honest, I prefer this game infinitely to Persona 4. I know a lot of people are just going to start raging about that, but I I just prefer the game. I like the characters, I like the battle, the you know, the battle structure. I don't want to have to control all the characters. As long as they make good decisions, I'm good. It it, it immerses me more to the you know I'm more immersed because I'm this character, I'm not all of these characters. Yeah. So basically, the story of Persona 3 is you're the main character, doesn't have a name, you name yourself. Personally, I name my character Shit Baggins. But, um, <laughs> he basically shows up to a new town, Port Island Station, because he's recently transferred to Gokekin High School, and he's going to his dorm, and he shows up, and as he's walking, the sky suddenly starts, turns green, and there's coffins everywhere, and apparently he's just like, okay, whatever, <laughs> it's not a big deal, just walks into the dorm, and then this random chick, who's, you find out later to be Yukari, Pulls a gun on him. Anyways, you go, you learn through this that he has a special power called Persona. Basically, it's your other self that dwells deep within your heart. Um, it's based. Most personas are based on mythology, um, but they, in the story of Persona Three, they can only be summoned through the Dark Hour, which is an hour that exists exactly at midnight. And during that time, normal people all are encased in coffins and don't know that it's going on. They don't remember. But also during that time, things called shadows appear, which are your main enemy for the game. There's tons of enemy types. It's just, it's hard to go into detail about shadows, but only a Persona user can fight shadows. But... You soon learn that you are no normal Persona user, because yes, you can switch between Personas, and fuse Personas together to make different Personas, in what's called the Velvet Room, with some guy who has a long dildo nose named Igor, and a weird chick named Elizabeth, who can actually kill anything without with just a snap of her fingers, but she's not allowed to just you know, take down everything for you, but, so, after this, you have a lot of party members that help you along, this is a turn-based RPG, and I'll just go through them now, and pull out my handy-dandy game guide, there's the main character, you, and then there's Yukari Takiba, she, for the main part, I, I only use Yukari when I had to, because you gain party members periodically throughout the game. Yukari is a healer and uses wind magic, but that's it, so she's not a very good character. I get rid of her second, because the first person you gotta get rid of is Junpei Yori. Some people think Junpei's great, I just cannot deal with him, I keep him out of my party, but he is, uses physical attacks and fire attacks. And I'll go into how the different elements and everything affect the gameplay, but not right now. There's Igor, he's the guy who fuses your personas in the Velvet Room. There's Akihiko Sonata, he is the captain of the boxing team, a senior at Gokeken High, and yeah, he's decent, but he's not someone you're going to want to keep in your final party. Then there's Mitsuru Kiroji. She is one of my favorite characters in the game just because 
She is really powerful and a great healer. She uses ice magic and healing. Oh, by the way, Akihiko is like all physical and some lightning. But yeah, Mitsuru, she's one of my final party characters that I use. Everyone has their own different feel, but I like Mitsuru in my party. Then there's Shuji Akutsuki. He is the adult guy who's supposed to be helping you, and he can't summon Persona. I'm not going to do any spoiler alerts, but I don't like the guy. From there, there's also many other characters, including Igus. She is a robot girl who is attached to the main character for some mysterious reason you find out throughout the game and she uses a physical attacks, that's it, she gets some healing at the end there's Kormaru, he is a dog yes, you have a dog that's a persona user on your team it's kind of ridiculous but there you go he is also <laughs> for that really overpowered he, he uses fire skills and death magic and Death magic is another type of element, but he uses darkness rather than light. Then there's Ken, and he's, you know, he's a grade schooler, and honestly, I just do not like this character. He's, I don't like anything about him, but some people do. Um, then there's Shinji. He is one of Akihiko's childhood friends. They were both orphaned and lived in the same orphanage. And, you know, I never put him on my team, so I don't know what he does. I think he, from what I've heard, he's the ultimate glass cannon, but whatever. Um, I'm, I think that's it for the actual party members. We also have a support character named Fuka, but all she does is scan the enemies and tell you their weaknesses. Um, come, going to weaknesses... You, your personas, have weaknesses, well some of them do, and then they have strengths. Basically there are different classes of how each element affects you. So the elements in this game are, and just all the different types of attacks, there is slash attacks, strike attacks, pierce attacks, those are all physical damage. Then there's fire, ice, electricity, wind, light, and death, and dark. So, with the physical attacks, you can be weak to those, but that's a lot less common because the physical attacks don't use up your SP. But they, if you want to use a skill, it does take up HP. Um, but there's the three types, and that you can be weak to them or strong to them. Then fire, you know, it's it's the same deal with all of them. Light and darkness, if you are hit with one of those though it is an instant kill that is, those two are death magic um, you can also be strong or weak to those unlike in persona 4 because in persona 4 if you are weak to a death magic if someone uses it on you automatic kill there's no chance to avoid it in persona 3 it just makes you a lot more susceptible like if you're weak to it and someone uses strong death magic on you nine times out of ten you're gonna die but it's not certain um, anyways, if you do get hit with a weakness of any other, you know, element than death magic, you'll get knocked down, which will take you out for a turn and leave you defenseless. You're not going to be able to dodge or anything during this time. Um, but enemies also have weaknesses, which you can exploit, and if you can knock down all the enemies, you can do an all-out attack which will do damage to all enemies basically your entire party just runs in and it's kind of hilarious it's got a puff of s smoke that's coming up from you attacking them um, I also forgot to mention that there's also almighty damage which is non-elemental you can't be strong against this because th there's different ways that you can be affected by things there's weaknesses which will it'll knock you down if you get hit by it there's just being normal. That means you know it's you're not strong against it, but you're not weak against it. 
strong, you'll still take damage, but you'll take a considerable amount less. Then there's null, where you nullify any damage of that type, so it's it does it hits you, but it doesn't do any damage. And then there's absorb, which you'll actually gain health back from getting hit with that element. And through proper fusion, fusion, it, this is really hard to do. By the way, this is something that you have to spend so much time trying to do, but you can actually fuse personas that will, you know, you'll either nullify or just gain health from all elements, so you can only be attacked by almighty damage. But fusing personas, you can actually gain abilities from the personas that you fuse that that persona would normally not have. Like, you can actually have a persona that has all types of damage. It's just hard to make, you know? They're not. It's not easy to <laughs> fuse personas to your whim. But if you, you master it, you can be really good at a persona series. Um, so, the way combat works is it's turn based. You. In this game. You play as just you. Then all your other teammates do their own thing, but you can use tactics to give them specific orders in what to do. Like you can say, conserve SP or attack a certain enemy, try to knock down people, full salt, help heal and support. You know, there's a bunch of options to make it to where they'll do kind of what you want, but you don't have full control over them. Which I prefer to uh, having control over everyone. So, what else is there? Hmm. <laughs> Drawing a blank here, but I I personally love this game. Um, another thing, actually, I just remembered is social links. This is all. This, not only is this game you know, a turn-based RPG, but it also has high school simulator elements to it. By making friends with certain people and spending time with them, you can gain social links, which will net bonus XP while you are fusing personas. So, there's the different arcanas, which are tarot card-based arcanas, so there's Fool and all of those, and there's a specific person that you can meet somewhere by spending time with them, you can bring up the levels, and the more levels you bring that up, the more experience a persona of that arcana is going to gain when you fuse it. It goes up to 10, and like, if you're fusing persona of that arcana and you have maxed out the social link at 10, you're going to gain 5 free levels just by, per, just by fusing them. Um, the, the social links are pretty interesting, actually. It's one of the great things about Persona that makes it a little different. Um, some of the social links to note are um, all the female party members you can have a social link with, but they're harder to get. My, I've only done one full playthrough, and I only had enough of my social stats to do Yukari's because you need to have a maxed out social stat for each of them. For Yukari's, you need to max out your charm. For Mitsuru's, you need to max out your intelligence. And, and for Fuka's, you need to max out your courage. Those are your three social stats. Let's see. Oh, and I guess is just something that you can do, but it's only near the end of the game. Hmm. Um... Also, there is another group of Persona users that are trying to stop you from taking down the Dark Hour, getting rid of the Dark Hour, and stopping the Shadows, because the Shadows are causing people to get what is called Apathy Syndrome, but really they're just feeding on a person's consciousness. And that's the main reason why you are fighting. But then there's this group, Strega. They're Persona users who don't want to get rid of the Dark Hour because they don't want to lose their power. Um, 
There, I don't really remember their names. There's one guy, I, I call him Revolver Jesus. Um, then there's Jin, I remember his name. Actually, I remember everyone but Revolver Jesus' name because, you know, Revolver Jesus is just a cooler name. But Jin, he uses grenades and stuff. And then there's Chidori, which Junpei fraternizes with partway through the game. And she's their support character. Well, let's see. Also in the FES, there's um, also another full game playthrough called The Answer. I haven't fully finished The Answer yet, but in that mode you play your main character is Igus, which you know it it can be pretty interesting. Igus gains the abilities to hold multiple personas, and yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to see it through my playthrough how that goes. Overall, I love this game. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite games of all. I'd have to give it a 9 out of 10. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. If you have a PS2, you know, on Amazon I bought this for $20. And it is... I had about 100 hours of gameplay with just one playthrough. And it has replayability out the ass. Because you can... You keep all your personas from the previous game when you switch over to a new persona, new game. And also there is a different tower where you're fighting the shadows that's a little bit harder on your second playthrough. And yeah, there's also Elizabeth requests, which are, you know, they get you little items, but that's all they're really good for. So anyways, this has been Jared the Hedgehog of Two Mortal Enemies Play. I hope you enjoyed my review of Persona 3. Bye.